going to speak about word measures on groups, um, structural applications and conjectures. And this is based on joint works with uh, uh, Liam Hanani, Michael McGee, Frederick Nod, uh, Ori Paranchevsky, and Daniel West. Um, okay, and here's the outline of the talk. So uh, the first three parts are going to be about uh, measures that are induced on groups by elements of the free group. Um, and the fir first we'll talk about uh, random permutations, um, then random unitary matrices, and then the third part we'll, we'll talk about random elements of the group uh, of uh, invertible matrices over finite fields. Um, so, uh, um, okay, and, and the fourth part uh, will be different, it will be a twist in the, uh, there will be a twist, we'll no longer speak about a permuta we'll go back to speaking about random permutations, but they will uh, be induced, the measure will be induced by an element of a surface group, not of the free group. Uh, and these are not equally, uh, so I'll sp spend about half of my time on the first part, um, and then uh, I will move, the, the last three parts are much, uh, will be much shorter. Okay, so uh, we'll start with the random permutations. Um, so we fix a formal word in the free group. So you can have in mind uh, this word, x, y, x, y to the minus two, as an example. And to get a W random permutation, we sample independent uniform random permutations. In this example, we, in, we need two of them because the word W has two letters. And we just plug them in, in the word and evaluate. Okay, so in, in our example, x, y, x, y to the minus two, um, we plug in two uh, random, the, the sigma and tau, we plug them, we take the product, and we get a random permutation in the symmetric group. So there are many different questions. Let me just state two uh, examples of challenges. First, uh, the first challenge, challenge is to find a structure, structure in the W measure on Sn, and you will see, soon see examples. And the second one are all these, uh, there are these um, questions uh, about when, if you take two different words, when do you get the same measure in every finite group, in every symmetric group, in every compact group, etc. Okay, so let's, um, so we look at uh, the measure, the uh, W random permutations, and we look at different statistics, and I will start with the statistics that we started with, which is the, the expected number of fixed points. So we denote by C1 uh, the, the number of fixed points of a permutation sigma. Um, C1 because C is for cycles, one is because it's a cycle of length one. We'll have, uh, we'll later generalize it. And we denote by the expected value, the expectation of W under W of C1, the average number of fixed points in a W random permutation. Okay, so this is, uh, we're going to use this notation of EW uh, throughout the talk. Um, okay, and here there is a, in 1994, uh, Nika, Alexandru Nika, he comes from free probability, and he was interested in the limits of such uh, W measures. The limit is N, as, as the size of the permutation groups tends to infinity, and he showed two basic results. The first one is that this expectation is a rational function in N. Okay, so let me give you some examples. Here, there's this uh, table. I, there are six examples here. So if you take um, the word X, so for the word X, you just get a random, a uniform random permutation, and the expected number of a uniform random permutation is one. If you take a square of a permutation, of a random permutation X squared, this is an easy exercise to show that the expected number of fixed points is two. Uh, okay, that these fixed points come either from fixed points or from two cycles of the random permutations, of the random permutation. Uh, now well, let's take uh, a third word, word is the square of a commutator. So the commutator X and Y is X, Y, X inverse, Y inverse. So here we get a, slight, a more um, involved uh, rational expression. Um, here is a third example, we get here just one. For this word, uh, by the way, can and you see And is the degree of the group? And is the number of elements that you put Right, yeah, yeah, good question. Yeah, N, sorry. Yeah, I didn't write it. N, is S N, as it, as it, yeah, N is the number of elements in the symmetric group. Not the number of elements, the, the N from this S N. Okay, yeah, thank you, Leo. 
Um, okay, and the last example is this. Okay, actually, I mean, I, 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 I'm not very precise here. This rational function only kicks in for large enough n. Obviously, for example, in, in can you see my mouse? The mouse? Yes. Yes, okay, good. So for example, here in this example, obviously it doesn't work for n equals one, two, or three, but it works uh, for every uh, n at, at least four. So this rational function is, uh, kicks in for a large enough n. So this is one thing that Nika showed. And the second ma main uh, basic thing that he showed, that if you look at the limit, uh, the limit of uh, these uh, expressions, the limit as n tends to infinity of the number of uh, fixed points, depends only on whether or not w is a power. And if it's a power, uh, what is the exponent of this power? So you write, you see here w is u to the d, uh, with u in non-power, then the limit depends only on d. And in this particular example, it is actually the number of divisors of d. And you can see it in the examples, uh, instead you see the limit here is to which is the number of divisors of two. In all other examples, these are no powers and the limit is one, which is the number of divisors of Okay, so now I was not sure until the beginning of the talk whether I should give um, if I do proof it's of this theorem. So let me just uh, so here I just put it uh, in here. Um, yeah, let, let me uh, dedicate three minutes for this. Many of you have, all, have already heard it. Um, okay, so why is this rational function and why? Okay, something that went wrong. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, okay. Yes. Okay. Um, okay, so uh, why is this a rational function? Let's take as an example. Uh, again, the commutator x, y. So we want to know what is the expected number of fixed points. Uh, so if a fixed point, let's say we have uh, some i in the set one to n, which is a fixed point. Uh, then it goes through, uh, it means that I goes by the permutation X to some J, and then it goes by the permutation Y to some K, and then by the permutation um, X inverse to some L, and then by the permutation Y inverse back to I. Now let's assume that these four numbers are distinct. Then we can draw this uh, uh, graph. Okay, let's count what is the expected number of fixed points of this sort, such that the, the four numbers they go through are all distinct. And then we need to choose uh, n possibilities for i, n minus one for j, n minus two for k and n minus three for l. Uh, and what is the probability? So now we have chosen the, the, the vertices in this, in this uh, path. And what is the probability that the two random permutation x and y satisfy that x uh, maps uh, i to j and l to k. So x maps i to j and l to k with probability one over n times n minus one. This is just a, a very simple calculation with random permutations. And this is the, sa the same is for j y because it also has two constraints. And this is the contribution of this case. And then we have, um, let's show, give one more example. Uh, let's say that i is equal to j and they are different from k which is equal to l. And then we have, uh, this is i j, this is k and l, 
x, x, and y. And here we have, we need to choose the value of i and j, and then the value of k and l, which is different. And then um, what is the probability that a random permutation x takes i to i and k to k? Um, this is one over n to times n minus one. For y, we have only one constraint, it has to take i to k. This is, this is with probability one over n, and we get this ex expression. Overall, uh, it, it, you see that we have only finitely many uh, cases. Um, in this case, there are seven cases. And if you sum them up, uh, you get that the expected number of fixed point is in this case, one plus one divided by n minus one. Okay, this shows, um, this is a very quick proof, I hope. Um, it's not that important to, to actually follow the proof, only that to see that this is uh, relatively easy. Um, this is a rational function in n. And why, and why, and we, if we look at the limit, what do we see at the limit? So I'll just say two words about that. Um, you see that the limit of, in this case, in the first case, the limit, as n tends to infinity, the limit is one. In this case, the limit is zero. And the reason is that the degree of the numerator is the number of vertices. The degree of the denominator is the number of edges. So um, we get the limit is one if and only if the graph we see is a cycle. In all, in all other cases, the, the graph is not a cycle and the limit is zero. And and then if you think about it for a few minutes, you see that you, you get cycles exactly for every root of the word. Okay, so uh, I'll just write here a final example. So for example, if W is U to the six, you get six cycles. One, when you see a cycle that um, uh, spells out W, U to the six, then you have a cycle that spells out u cubed, and you have a cycle, a bygone, that spells up u squared and u. Okay, these are the four cycles from which you get that the limit is the number of divisors. Okay, so this was the, um, sorry, where is it? Okay, this was the, um, the only proof I'm going to show in my talk. Okay, and now the question is, okay, so the question, if I go back to the, um, to the table, so you see that we know that the limit, um, you see that the limit, we know what the limit is and we know when it deviates from one. What about the second order of magnitude? Where does, can we explain that? So we know, for example, that if we compare the, uh, the ex expectation with one, Okay, one is the average number in a random permutation. Uh, what is the deviation from this? So we know that in the limit, it deviates only for powers, for proper powers. But can we know, can we explain the uh, order of deviation for non, for non uh, power words? And this is what, um, this is what the primitivity rank does. This is, this is some uh, generalization of powers in free groups. Um, so I'm go I want to focus this slide, we'll, we will explain this notion. Uh, and this is uh, probably the most important definition in the talk. So uh, um, yeah, so if you can pay attention. Okay, so the, the question is what is the order or degree of the deviation from one for non-powers? So for this, we want to generalize the notion of power. So let's look at powers in a different way. So if W is a proper power, if it's U to the D for some D, at least two, then uh, another way to say it is that W, the element W in the free group is contained in the subgroup generated by U, but by itself, it doesn't generate, W itself doesn't generate this group. So it is not primitive. A primitive element in, in a free group is a, a, or an element of a, of a free group is called primitive if it belongs to some minimal generating set or a basis, but let, let's say a minimal generating set or a generating set of minimal size. So in this case, uh, U, uh, the subgroup generated by U is cyclic. So we look at uh, generating sets of size one and W in this case is not part of a generating set of size one. 
which is another way to say that it's a non, uh, it's a proper power. And we call this primitivity rank zero and denote by pi tilde of W equals zero. So what is the next uh, level of words? We said that the primitivity rank is one if first of all, W is not a power, but on the other hand, there is a subgroup generated by two elements, not one element, two elements, where W is not a minimal generator. It's not primitive. It doesn't belong to any um, generating set of size two. Okay, so now what the, the, the general definition of primitivity rank of a word of an element in the free group is, we look at the maximal possible value of R. So actually this R should be uh, an integer. So maximal possible integer such that whenever there is a subgroup which contains W and this subgroup is of, of degree at most R, so there are uh, at, at most R generators, um, then W is a minimal generator. W is primitive in H. So in other words, I mean, um, if you take just the word, the element X in the free group, the, the element X is, is obviously a primitive element in the free group. And it will be primitive, in fact, in every subgroup that contains it. So it will always be part of some minimal generating set. And primitivity rank measures uh, shows that uh, if the primitivity rank is, say, three, it means that up to subgroups of order three, of rank three, uh, we cannot distinguish our word from X. Uh, our word will also always be primitive. It will always be a, a minimal generator. But there are, if the primitivity rank is three, it means that there are, um, there are subgroups of rank four where our word uh, is contained, but not as a primitive element. Okay, so we denote it by uh, pi tilde. And finally, um, what are the possible values of this primitivity rank? Um, okay, so we get minus one for uh, the trivial element for, uh, for one. I mean, the trivial element, the identity is, gets minus one because already in the trivial subgroup of which is of rank zero, it is not primitive. Then zero is great four powers. Then we get all possible values up to the rank of F minus one. And this is because every element which is not primitive in our ambient group F uh, has F as a counter example. So if you take F itself as a subgroup, the entire group, um, then it, is, it has rank R and we know that this element is not primitive then. So it cannot be, if the element is not primitive in F, it is at most rank F minus one, the primitivity rank. If it is primitive, then it's an easier observation to show that it is, it is primitive in every subgroup and therefore we get infinity. Okay. So um, this is a primitivity rank. And now let's go back to fixed points in random permutations. Um, and this is a theorem joint with Ori Palanchevsky, who is here. Uh, from Jerusalem. And we show that the expected number, the deviation from the uh, uniform measure is exactly of the order of deviation is, is n, one over n to the primitivity rank plus stuff of smaller order of magnitude. And we also know what is the coefficient here. Uh, the coefficient here, it turns out it has to do with the, exactly the subgroups, the witnesses that show us why the primitivity rank is not higher. So these are the subgroups of rank, uh, which is one more than the primitivity rank where W is not primitive. These are exactly the subgroups that, that show you that you cannot go higher with the primitivity rank. Uh, and it turns out that this set is always finite. And this is exactly the coefficient here. Okay, so let's see. Uh, so what does it mean? It, so we have this uh, categorization of words in the free group with, according to the uh, primitivity rank. Uh, the first example is W equals one. Um, and there we have uh, just n minus one fixed points. I mean, the num of n minus one is a deviation from one. Next, we have powers, and we already know by Nika that the, the, the deviation from one is of order one. And then our sh theorem shows that if you look at the next layer, so primitivity rank one, these are, for example, x, y, and x, y, x, y minus two, the order of uh, deviation is one over n. And then we go on uh, to all these uh, primitivity ranks. Now, the, the last primitivity rank, I mean, the highest primitivity rank, except for infinity, is the rank F minus one. And it turns out that a random word, a ra if you take a large random word or a large word 
uh, of certain large length at random, it will usually be of this rank. And Ron, then- uh, can I ask a question? Sure. In the last column, is it the deviation from the expected value or the, or the crit W is always zero there? No, no, it's, sorry, no, it's the deviation. Minus one is the deviation from the, you see the, the, the deviation from the expected value in the uniform uh, measure. But the, the, what about the term crit W divided by n to the pi tilde W? Ah, so what you see here is n to the pi. I, I forgot ah, about, I, I didn't mention the number of critical, just theta means that it's in, of this I see, order. I see, I see. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, and then finally, we have the primitive rank infinity, which is exactly the class of primitive words, the words that are primitive minimal generators in the ambient group. Um, and there we have exactly zero. I mean, this is because for primitive words, it's, it's actually an easy observation that we get exactly the uniform measure. So the deviation from the uniform measure is zero. Okay, and this, uh, we later use this um, result to give a new proof uh, in, the, in the field of spectral gap or expansion of random graph. Uh, so this is a work from 2015. And then we'll, recently with Joel Friedman, we uh, improved, improved it um, to show that the second eigenvalue of a random irregular graph is at most, uh, let's say the Ramanujan bound plus one over D square root of D minus one. This is certainly not the optimal result. The optimal result here is due to Friedman from about 15 years ago where you replace this one over square root of D minus one with an epsilon, um, but it's a very different proof. Uh, so this gives a, a new proof to a slightly weaker result. Um, okay, so some of the motivation in general for this kind of work on a word measure comes from um, a questions about expansion and spectral gaps. And I will go back to such uh, applications in the sequel of the talk. Okay. So we have this, um, we have this result. Um, now, what about um, other statistics? So this was a result about uh, fixed points. What about other statistics of this, uh, of random permutation? So what I'm going to focus on in this slide is the number of T cycles. So number of, which we denote by CT. Um, so number of two cycles, number of three cycles, et cetera. This is not the general result that we have with, uh, this is work with uh, my student Liam Hanani. This is not the general result we have, but this is the result that it's the most easier. Uh, this is the part of the result which is easiest to explain uh, in such talk. Um, so let's see what's here. What is the expected value of uh, in a random permutation, in a uniform random permutation, what is the expected value of the number of T cycles? Where it turns out that this is one over T. Uh, you can see, for example, because if you take an, a fixed element one in, a, in Sn, uh, the, the, it, the length of the cycle that, it, that is, it, it, is, it is containing is uniform between one and n. So uh, if you count that, how many elements, what is the expected number of elements that are contained in a T cycle, you get one. But you counted every cycle, every T cycle, T times. So you get this result. Okay, so now what is, now we ask again the same question. What is, if we take a W random permutation, what is the deviation from this uh, uniform measure from one over T? So we have this theorem, we just published it, it just appearing on archive, that for non-powers, if, if the word is a non-power and if T is at least two, then this deviation is also also here also uh, the primitive rank plays a role and we get this bound of O of one over N to the primitive rank plus one. And I should, okay, so first of all, why do, why do we say that we don't want powers and not uh, T equals one? So, if, so obviously for T equals one, uh, this result doesn't hold. You have, you have it here for T equals one, uh, you get a larger order. And for powers, this is also not true. I mean, for powers, the, this, um, the deviation is also of order one, uh, at least for, in some cases. For example, um, for example, if you take the expected value under a, a power of uniform permutation of the expected number of uh, three cycles, you get two thirds. 
I, th I think if I did not, if I'm not mistaken in my computation, uh, so you see the deviation from one third is one third, uh, which is of order one. Um, anyway, so I should stress that this was not obvious at all when you started working on that. It was not obvious at all that the permittivity rank uh, should play a role here too. And moreover, it's not obvious that um, we should get here the plus one. This was not obvious at all when we started working on that. Um, and we get, oh, how do I delete this? Um, just a second. Okay, so as a result, we use the same method of proof as we had with uh, Joel Friedman in the previous slide, and we see that random Schreier graphs, which describe the action of Sn on S tuples, S is fixed now, um, satisfy that the second again value is again, we have the same kind of result. It's at most uh, two times square root of D minus one plus uh, some constant, it depends on S over D square root of D minus one. So a random Schreier graph just means that we take, I don't want to explain what a Schreier graph is because I'm not going to speak much more about it, but it's, you can think of a Cayley graph. This is some quotient of a Cayley graph and the random Cayley graph means that we take at random, we take say two random generators, two elements of the group at random and look at the, at the Cayley graph that we get. This is what a random Cayley graph or a Schreier graph means um, and we get this result. So in some regimes, this is the best result um, that currently, in some regimes of S and D, this is the best result. And uh, the conjecture, it's probably true that you can replace this again by epsilon. Now, if you go back to W measures, to world measures, our conjecture is actually that uh, the bound is actually much, much smaller that the real order of magnitude of the, exp of the deviation from uh, the uniform measure is of order one over um, N to the T times the primitivity rank. Okay, this, this should, not, should not be a plus one here. Okay, so this is the order of magnitude. Again, I'm hiding, this is not the real uh, conjecture. The real conjecture is about irreducible characters of Sn. This is only an, one aspect that is easy is, is to explain. So somehow the primitivity rank plays a role, but in a mul multiplicative way. And if this conjecture is true, and we have some evidence towards this conjecture, then we can improve our result to Schreier graph and to get a, the same bound for every S. With, instead of a constant here that depends on S, we get a one, if this conjecture is true. And um, so I, I personally find this conjecture fascinating um, because it, it shows some kind of a universal role played by the, um, the primitivity rank. And it also suits very well um, so we, like, we just learned it in the last uh, few weeks that this conjecture actually suits very well some conjectures that are not even written uh, yet uh, by um, um, uh, students of uh, Martin Brightson. I mean, former students, um, Henry Wilton and uh, Hoyer uh, in the UK. So um, this is part of the reason I find it fascinating. Okay. So this is what uh, I want to say about random permutations for now. And now can I ask to... about the conjecture? Um, sure. So do you have like tightness in T that for every T you have some W that shows that this is, would be the right order? Uh, we have some W. So uh, if you take the commutator, for example, this is tight. And this is a result of Frobenius. Uh, if W is commutator or, or, or a square, or a product of powers and uh, of disjoint powers and disjoint commutators. So there are some power, some words where this is tight. Uh, so in a way you can think of this conjecture as a generalization of a very old uh, result of uh, uh, Frobenius. Okay, thanks. Okay, so now I want to move to the second part of the talk, which again, so this, the last three parts are much shorter which have to do with random unitary matrices. The second part has to do with random unitary matrices. So just to be on the same page, a unitary matrix, unitary group is uh, the group of uh, invertible matrices over a complex, over the complex field, which are where the rows are an uh, orthonormal basis. And so what is a W random unitary matrix? So again, you take, you fix your word W, you take at random uh, independent matrices uh, from 
the unitary group. And here the, the group is infinite. You cannot take uniform distribution, but the, na the natural measure to take is the Haar measure, which is a, a probability measure, which gives you, which has very nice uh, properties, and it is uh, unique. So, and you use here the fact, because UN is a compact group, you have this uh, unique probability measure called the Haar, the Haar uh, measure. Um, so we are going to, again, we have, we have some results about different statistics, so I'm going to focus at first at least on the expected trace. So we look at the expected trace of a W random uh, unitary matrix. Um, and here, uh, what is, first of all, what is the expectation of the uniform measure? Here it's an easy observation to show that it is zero. So now when we look at the um, deviation from the uniform distribution, we just look at the, um, the expectation itself. And here, the same results of Nika have an analog. First of all, it turns out that this expected value is also a rational function in N. N here is, comes from UN. This is the size of the matrices. Uh, this is the result of Collins and Schniadi from 2006. It follows uh, a series of works by Wagnerten, uh, Shu, and Collins. So, but, but this is the result. This is where it's written uh, most uh, generally. generally. Um, and soon afterwards, Radulescu and Mingo Schneider and Speicher independently, they showed the same result uh, as Nika for uh, what happens for powers. And they showed that whenever W is, is a power, U to the D, where U is a non-power, the limit of statistics depends only on D. So we have the same phenomena, that the limit of these different natural statistics of uh, the world measures depends only on the exponent of the power and not on the basic. In, in particular, if the word is, is a non-power, the limits all look like as if you, it, you looked at a uniform random permutation. Okay, so let's look again at some examples. Ah, okay, but before we look at examples, there's one observation I want to make. I'm not going to prove it, it's an, it's an easy, but this is an easy proof that follows from the properties of the Haar measure that if W is not in the, this subgroup of the field group, so this is the group of the, con the uh, commutator subgroup, this is the group of all words that are products of commutators, then the expectation of the trace is zero. And therefore, in, the, in these examples that I show you, I only talk about powers of only elements in this commutator subgroup, so elements that are uh, products of commutators. So these are, let's look at these examples. Okay, so these are the, this is the rational expression you get from the commutator X and XY. This is the expected trace of XY for every N at least one. In the second example, you get three over N, and then you get these uh, different expression, expressions. So again, like in the symmetric group, it's very natural to ask um, what is the deviation from what is the deviation from the uh, uniform measure. And it turns out, and this is joint work with Michael McGee, that the question has to do with commutator length of the words. What is the commutator length? So every word in this table, every word where you, we know that the expectation is not zero, is a product of commutators. And the commutator length tells you what is the shortest product. What is the length of the shortest product of commutators? That is equal to that equals uh, the word. So this is the commutator length, and this is uh, the theorem. It was published in 2019. It's a, we did a few years before. Uh, the expected value of the trace is that. So the leading term is one over n to the uh, two times commutator length minus one plus stuff of smaller order of magnitude. You see, actually, there is a jump by two here, but this is not very important in the, in the order. And what is the coefficient here? So this is very, this is actually very nice. The coefficient here is roughly the number of solutions to this equation. So you take G, G here is the commutator length of the word. So you, you know you can express your word as a product of G commutators, but there, there could be different ways. So I'm not giving any details here, but I mean, there is, there is some natural equivalence relation between solutions. So you mode out by this equivalence relation, and so you actually count the number of different uh, equivalence classes. And this is all up to, so you count this number of solutions, but only up to corrections for the existence of some non-trivial stabilizers. So you have some 
you have some natural uh, group here acting on the solutions and, and um, sometimes you have a non-trivial stabilizer and, and you, you take a, so you, this is not just a count, a simple count of the solutions. So let's look at some examples here, at the examples here. So for example, if W is just a simple commutator of X and Y, you have exactly one solution up to equivalence. This is a simple solution, no stabilizers. So you just get here, uh, the coefficient is one. And indeed, um, the commutator length is two. So the commutator length here is one. So the, the order is one over n to, to the one. Here also the commutator length is one. So you get of order, order one over n. And you have three different solutions, uh, which you see here. In the fourth example, uh, it turns out that the commutator length of this word is not three, as you may guess, but actually two. So this can be expressed as a product of two commutators. Um, and um, you see that the, the coefficient, the leading coefficient here is, of this, the order here is one over n to the, one over n cubed. And so you get here nine over n cubed. This is the leading, co the leading term. And um, so n cubed is, is the correct one, is, is twice the commutator length minus one. And nine in this example is, is, actually, is actually the number of solutions. But in these two examples here, the commutator length is two, so you get one over n cubed. But actually there's only one solution, but the coefficient is minus four. And the reason is that there is some non-trivial stabilizer and this minus four counts some properties of the stabilizer. In this case, the commutator length is two. So you're supposed to have also one over n cubed, but the coefficient CW here is zero because this is what the, this is what the stabilizer of this uh, solution bring, uh, leads to. Okay, so this is the theorem. I should say that the right uh, way, the right language should think about this, uh, this result and to prove it is actually geometric or topological and in, in terms of uh, surfaces and mapping class groups. If you think about it in these terms, then uh, you can general, generalize this result to other statistics of, uh, of W random unitary matrices. So I'm not going to go into it, but this is uh, the right way to think about it is topological. Um, right. Okay. So, so far it seems like there is a, okay, we asked a question about the symmetric group. We had some answers. We asked a similar question about the unitary group. We got some answers. There were some relations in, in terms of the limits and in terms of the rational expressions, but it, it seems like there is no relation if you look at just the deviation from one. Uh, in the symmetric group, we got the permittivity rank. Here we get the commutator length. So it seems like there is no relation here. And, 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 and every family of groups gives you a different theory. But, but now I want to uh, actually um, rethink this, uh, uh, this guess. So we know that the expected trace is of order at, at, at most uh, one over n to the twice commutator length minus one. This is what we had in the previous slide. But now there is an, here is an easier ob observation. There is a connection between the commutator length and the primitivity rank. And th this is the, the observation is this, the primitivity rank is at most twice commutator length minus one. And the reason is, let's say that the commutator length is four. If the commutator length is four, it means that our world is a product of four different commutators. So you can take the, the eight words that appear in these commutators. You have uh, eight words in these four commutators. So you know that the word is, is contained in the subgroup generated by these eight elements. And, it, and, and moreover, it is a product of commutators in this subgroup. So the primitivity rank, so it cannot be primitive there. So the primitive rank it cannot be eight. So it, it is at most seven. Okay, this is this observation. So now from combining the observation with the theorem, we get that expected trace is at most, again, one over n to the primitivity rank, which is exactly the same result we had um, in the, for the symmetric group. And then we also have this uh, for other statistics. So, uh, so for example, uh, part of the other statistic you can look at is the expected trace of a power of the matrix. So it doesn't, the, the details here doesn't, don't really matter. Uh, here we have, we showed in our work with Michael that uh, the bound is, has to do not with the commutator length, but with a stable commutator length, which I'm not going to define. And we get times some uh, order of K. 
And in fact, we conjecture, following this conjecture in the symmetric group, we conjecture that the permittivity rank plays a role here too. And if so, uh, the, the right bound should be uh, n to the permittivity rank times k. Here, this is k. And uh, so again, I'm going over very quickly these uh, definitions and, and conjectures, but one nice thing about it is that if you believe this conjecture and combine it with our result with McGee, you get some non-trivial uh, relation between the primitivity rank and the stable commutator length. This, this, you get this. Um, so to get from this conjecture to this, we use some result of, uh, of Caligari. Um, but this conjecture, uh, which is very concrete, you can test it uh, on examples. This was actually tested uh, by my student Gal Ordo in some example, and later by, we saw it in some paper that came out recently. And this does work for uh, many, many words that you simulate. And this was conjectured independently by a student of uh, Martin Brightson called Hoyer. So uh, this is, I, th I found it again, I, I, uh, it's like, a, um, Obviously, it strengthened my belief in this conjecture that you see that other people conjecture uh, independently things that uh, follow from uh, the conjecture. So what we see here, we start to see that the probability rank may, might play um, a general, uh, a more general uh, role in this uh, theory. Okay, I think I have ten more minutes. Is this correct? Uh, yeah. Yeah, about so. Okay. Um, okay, so I want to move to the third part of my talk, which is, uh, let's go to, a, 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 again, a slightly different word, world of uh, run, W random elements, matrices, in the group of uh, invertible matrices over some fixed finite field. Okay, and you see that this theory, uh, again, has a very different flavor. So we started with, uh, okay, perhaps I'll say it in, uh, soon. Let's start with, uh, um, well, explaining what we have here. So we, we fix a prime power Q. We look at the uh, group of invertible matrices over the finite field of order Q. And, and let's focus here on one statistics, which, is, which comes from the action, the natural action of these, these groups on the vector space of FQ to the N. And we count the number of fixed points. So fix of G, if G is a matrix, fix of G will be the number of fixed points in this action on, uh, on this um, vector space. And now in this, in this case, the expected number of fixed points in a, for a uniform element, for a, random, for a uniform random element is two. This is because we always have the zero. The zero, the zero vector is always a fixed point. And then the rest you have, uh, uh, a transitive action on all other actions, on all other vectors, and this gives you a, it's an easy exercise to see that you get one fixed point yeah, uh, on all other vectors. So the expected value is, uh, is two, the expected, the expected number of fixed points is two for the uniform di distribution. Uh, so this is a, a work in progress with uh, my student, Daniel West. So she and I uh, proved uh, a year ago, although it's, it's appears in her thesis, but not yet uh, in, it's not yet written in a form of a paper. We showed actually uh, the, the analog of Nika result, Nika's result. So we showed here that in this case too, the expected value of this character, of this uh, statistics and also of other statistics is a rational function in Q to the N. Okay, so for example, if you take the commutator, the expected number of fixed points is two plus this expression, which is rational in Q to the N. Okay, and you see that the degree of this expression is, uh, this is roughly one over Q to the N. This is the order, one over Q to the N, because this is, okay. Um, and also the, the part with powers, if you write W as U to the D and U is a non-power, and you look at the limit, the limit depends only on D. So it's the same phenomenon we had for the symmetric group, and we also had for the unitary group, we also see it here. Uh, it depends only on D. And also we, and the exact value, by the way, is the number of divisors of the polynomial T to the D minus one in the uh, polynomial ring over FQ. Okay, this is, this is less important right now. What the more important fact is that, is that it depends only on D. 
Okay, so now we can ask again, um, what is the deviation from two, from the, from the uniform distribution? Um, what is the order of, of uh, deviation from the uniform distribution? And here I'm going to, to show you some, uh, very quickly, some conjectural picture. We, we don't know yet that this is exactly the answer. We don't have a full proof. We have some evidence. So here is the, the conjectural picture that we, we, we think is true. So instead of considering the free group, we consider the free group algebra. So this is the free group the, over the, uh, we take the, our free group where W uh, lives and look at finite uh, formal sums of elements from the free group with coefficients in, the, in our finite field. And it's a, there is a classical result by Paul Cohen from 1964 um, that um, every right ideal, I, uh, every right ideal, every one-sided ideal in this algebra is a free A model with a well-defined rank. Okay, so it means that it is, uh, we, and then we can once again ask whether an element in, in an ideal is primitive, whether it is a minimal generator. We have the notion of a basis and everything, or, or minimal, minimal generating set. Um, and th this, therefore, the, we can define again the primitivity rank of an element of this algebra in a similar way to, to, way to, to how we defined it uh, for uh, free groups. And this is the same definition, basically. This is the maximal integer R, such that whenever you have um, a, an, an ideal of rank, a one-sided ideal of rank at most R, uh, your and, and your element is contained there, then it is primitive in this ideal. It is part of a basis or part of a minimal generating set. Um, and then we have two conjectures regarding uh, the question of the, expect the deviation from the number of fixed points from a uniform distribution. So we think that the deviation is again measured by this primitivity rank. And notice this is the primitivity rank of one minus W. So we think of, we cannot take the primitivity rank of W itself. W is, an in, is, a, um, is a unit element here. So the primitivity rank of W is just um, Probably zero, um, zero, I think. Yeah, I don't know. It does, w is meaningless here, okay? It's a, it's a unit element, but uh, one minus W is the thing we need to look at. Uh, and we think that the primitivity rank of one minus W in this algebra, this is what determines um, the deviation from the uniform distribution. And furthermore, so is there, do, is there a plan? Is there a, so what about the original primitivity rank? Is it, does it also play a role here, like we think it plays in the symmetric group and in the unitary group? Well, we think it does, and we think that it actually there is an equality between the primitivity rank of one minus W in the algebra and W in the free group. So we think that there is an equality. Uh, one, one implication is immediate. Okay, and I don't want to go into it, but it's, yeah, it's obvious that uh, this primitivity rank is at most the primitivity rank of W. Okay, so we think actually that for in this family of groups, we also fall into the, I mean, if this is true, then we get the same phenomena that the primitivity rank of W uh, plays a role, um, uh, plays a universal role here too. And again, we have some evidence towards this conjecture, but we're still far from uh, proving it. Okay, so I want to sum up to recap what we, what we had so far about W random group elements. So we saw actually, that in different families of groups, I talked about SN, UN, GLN over FU, there are other groups, but these are the, which behave similar to one of those. So there are other groups that we know, uh, we know of. We saw three universal phenomena. First of all, we saw that if you look, you look at the expected value of natural statistics in a W random element, then you get rational functions. We saw that if the word is a power, or we saw that the limit of the statistic depends only on whether or, word, whether or not the word is a power and what is the exponent of this power. And we conjecture, and we have some, we have so far uh, some evidence towards the following, the co a conjectural universal law that says that, uh, so the, the real way to state it is that if you take a natural family of irreducible characters, then the expected value of this character under the W measure is of order one over the dimension of the character to the primitivity rank. 
Okay, so, I mean, this is just the, the way to, to take all these examples together. Um, and I should say that right now this conjecture is, we don't know how to put it in an exact form. What, what are the, what families of groups we can take and what are, what is the natural, what is the universal definition of a natural family of irreducible characters. But in every example that we look at, uh, it's kind of easy to guess what, what this means. Okay, so now I have, um, I guess, two minutes left. So perhaps I'll um, say very briefly, this is a, actually a very short part, so I'll, I will do it. Um, so now this is a twist in the plot. This is a work um, we've done with Michael, again, Michael McGee again throughout the last year or so. Uh, now you change, instead of looking at a measure, um, an element of the free group, you look at a different group. And in particular, we look at the, in this, let's take as an example, this is, uh, we look at the fundamental group of this uh, compact surface of genus two, compact orientable surface of genus two. You can write it uh, as the group generated by four elements, A, B, C, and D, uh, with one relation, the product of two commutators. Um, now, and we fix an element in this group. So now it's an easy observation, I'm not going to explain it, that if you want to know, if we go back to free groups, a double random permutation can be obtained in the same manner by taking a random homomorphism from the free group to Sn. A random homomorphism just map, of a free group just map every generator to a random, to an independent random permutation, and you take the image of W. So if you look at this way to define a random double random permutation, we can do it for every finitely generated group, in particular, we can do it for uh, the surface group. We take a random homomorphism from the surface group to Sn, and we look at the image of, omega, of gamma. This gives us a, a natural a, a random permutation, which we call a, a gamma random permutation. Uh, and what we showed, we actually showed again an analog of Nika's result, although it is much, much harder in this case. Um, it, it's much harder. So first of all, the expected number of fixed points is not, an, is not a rational function, but it is approximated by an infinite power series in one over n. Um, so here's an example. If you check just the, the expected number of fixed point of, if you look at A, A is one of the generators here. You look at the image of one of the generators. It is approximated by this infinite uh, series, which means that now this infinite series doesn't, uh, it never converges, but it means that if you cut it at any, if you, you can cut this series at every place, and then you get some, um, you get uh, the exact order of, of uh, up to one over n cubed, for example. Okay, so this is the right order of the exact number of fixed points up to order one over n cubed. Um, and we also showed the same result for powers. We showed that if uh, gamma is a power, is a d power of a non-power, then the limit depends only on d. And also, and in particular, it is also actually the number of divisors of d. So we get exactly the same result this is exactly the same result as for free groups. Um, okay, and yeah, so now, so the, the, the original motivation for, yeah, okay, the original motivation uh, for this is, has to do with questions on expansion or spectral gap in random surfaces, and we use this result together with the Frederick node, and this is again, this arrow, hides uh, a lot of extra work we had to do to get from this theorem to this theorem. But we show that a random end cover of a fixed hyperbolic closed surface satisfies that the lambda two here means that is the second, is the uh, smallest new eigenvalue of the cover. It is at least three over 16 minus epsilon. Asymptotically almost surely. Okay, I, I'll leave it as is. We get some result on spectral gap of surfaces. And finally, I want to end with two uh, questions that this theorem sparks. So first of all, we saw that, I mean, these two, L, these two uh, results are almost the same as the free group. The second result is exactly the same. And we can ask whether this is a universal phenomenon, for example, in oil hyperbolic groups. I mean, we know we have some cases for which it doesn't hold, but perhaps it is true for all hyperbolic groups. The limit depends only on uh, D. And second, what is the replacement for the primitivity rank? How, how can we 
categorize the elements further in this group? Is there, is there some categorization, some nice categorization, uh, which shows that the order of a magnitude of the expected number of fixed points? Um, yeah, and if we know this, we can get better results in, for, spectral, for spectral gap of surfaces. Okay, so I will uh, stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Doron, for the beautiful talk. I will now unmute everybody so we can all uh, clap. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, now mute, I now mute everybody again, and now whoever wants to ask Dawn a question, please unmute yourself and ask. Um, yes, I want to. Uh, I wanted to ask, are these results like relevant to free probability? Because you mentioned Nika looked at it first. Doron, I think you're on mute. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. yeah, many of the people I mentioned here uh, are come from free probability, and they are uh, interested in the limits of world measures. So many of the results, so if you say that uh, random unitary matrices are asymptotically uh, free, it means that it means that uh, the, the, these world measures. When you look at the limit, you get. I mean, traffic means that if you look at the the limit of world measures, they behave like uniform measure, or they tend to zero, something like that. I mean, different statistics. So, the limit has to do with free probability. The more um, subtle structure that we find usually is already. Um, I don't know. It's, it's it's not as natural question for them. Thank you. I have a question. Uh, um, so two questions actually. Uh, do you look uh, also at uh, joint distributions of uh, the, uh, diff of several cycles? Uh, uh, this is one question. The other question: uh, Did you look at uh, other statistic uh, on the permutation group, like uh, inversion numbers or descent number? Or something like that? Um. Okay, so the, the first question, yes. Yeah, so uh, this was, I, I only showed uh, the things that are easiest to join, to, to explain, but we actually look, look at uh, all kind of uh, fixed monomials of, um, all, all joint distribution of uh, cycles or, uh, yeah, you can take any, any monomial um, in cycles and ask what is the expectation of this monomial. So the number of, uh, fixed point cube times the number of uh, two cycles times the number of uh, five cycles, for example. Uh, but to state the conjecture and the result in the conjecture, you need to take actually uh, some particular basis of this uh, ring of, of functions. This is why I only talked about um, the number of cycles, but the result is more general. But for statistics that are not local, so I'm not sure what you mean by inversion number, um, but that Let's say the total number of cycles. So in the number is, uh, if you look at the permutation, you look at the number of pairs that, uh, uh, that are in Ah, uh, so, right, right, right. Okay. Okay, good. So this is something I thought about with uh, my student, Matan uh, Zaidel. Yeah, so, yeah, no, this is also, this also behaves like the permittivity rank. So you, you can show, um, actually you can, the number, the inversion number, this is also known as the Cochester length of the group, right? So the, the expected number of this um, thing, actually you can express it in, in terms of cycles, of cycles of certain length. Uh, so you can, uh, this is, uh, you, you get also, that this is also uh, controlled by the primitive length. Some, some deviation from the uniform distribution. But, but, but if you look at the total number of cycles, for example, then no, then, these are uh, universal properties that we do not we do not see in this, uh, at least not directly. We do not see in this machinery. Um, okay, so Alex asked whether we can prove some result on the expansion of Schreier graph uh, in PGLN uh, and Q. Um, 
So this is the plan. I should say that there is a new result by um, Sean Eberhardt from a few months ago. So he gives some result on the expansion of Schreier graph, but of, of this group uh, as n tends to infinity, but with many, uh, with many generators, we think we can get better results. Um, but, so this is work in progress. We don't have anything to state yet. Ron, may I ask, uh, do you expect that the statistic is Poisson? So if you don't look just the expectation of the full uh, distribution, do you expect the Poisson statistics? Yeah. For, for which? And which for uh, points, for number of cycles. For yeah, number of fixed points, this is uh, also, this follows all the way from Nika. So uh, by the moments, method, method of moments, because these local statistics give you all the moments of this, of the distribution, and you see that you get exactly the same distribution as, the same moments as you get for, for uniform distribution. And, this, and there it is. Poisson, yeah. For non-powers, and for powers, this is some, some variation, but. Uh, oh, okay. So in all these, in all these cases, usually, um, so you know that the limit behaves like what you expect for just a uniform distribution or, the unif or, a, or a square of uniform element. And these are all, usually they are all calculated by, they are either classic or they are computed by uh, Diaconis and Koto. So Diaconis has a very nice paper which gives you, um, or, or, or students, they, are, always, they always give, the, they know the answer to these limit questions, know these groups. What about a uh, tuple of words? Yeah, so the, uh, everything I said um, generalized to tuples of words. Any, any further questions? Okay, so let's thank again Doron and uh, Nathan for this uh, beautiful morning session. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh...